using a layer 3 switch to achieve VLAN intercommunication. First, let's take a look at the objectives of the experiment. 1. Master the switch tag VLAN configuration. 2. Learn the basic configuration methods of layer 3 switches. 3. Master the VLAN routing configuration method for layer 3 switches. 4. Implement mutual communication between VLANs using the layer 3 switch. Experiment background. A company has two main departments. The technology department and the sales department. Located in different offices. For security and ease of management. The hosts in both departments have been divided into separate blends. With the technology department and the sales department each in their own VLAN. However, due to business requirements, hosts in the sales department and the technology department need to be able to access each other and obtain corresponding resources. To achieve this, the switches of the two departments are connected through a layer 3 switch. The communication between the two departments will be facilitated through the layer 3 switch. To resolve the communication between the layer 3 switches, the following technical principles are applied. First, the layer 3 switch possesses routing capabilities and VLAN intercommunication is achieved by identifying the IP addresses of data packets and looking up the routing table for path selection and forwarding. The layer 3 switch can use direct routing to achieve mutual access between different VLANs. Configuring IP addresses for ports on the layer 3 switch using the SVI switched virtual interface method to establish connections between VLANs. SVI refers to creating virtual interfaces and configuring IP addresses for VLANs within the switch. The steps for the experiment are as follows. Step 1, similar to previous experiments. Start by drawing the network topology using packet tracer software. Step 2, on the layer 2 switch. Configure VLAN 2 and VLAN 3, and assign port 2 to VLAN 2 and port 3 to VLAN 3. Define port F0 first. Connecting the layer 2 switch to the layer 3 switch. As a tag VLAN mode. In other words, in trunk mode. On the layer 3 switch. Create VLAN 2 and VLAN 3. Then, verify the communication between hosts in VLAN 2 and VLAN 3 on the layer 2 switch. To enable communication between VLANs on the layer 3 switch, we will create virtual interfaces SVIS for VLAN 2 and VLAN 3 and configure their IP addresses. We will also examine the layer 3 switch routing table. Next, we will set the default gateways for hosts in VLAN 2 and VLAN 3 on the layer 2 switch to the corresponding IP addresses of the SVIS on the layer 3 switch. Finally, we will verify whether hosts in VLAN 2 and VLAN 3 on the layer 2 switch can communicate with each other. The key points of the experiment are as follows. First, set the IP addresses for the interfaces of each VLAN on the layer 3 switch. Treat VLANs on the layer 3 switches interfaces. Similar to a router, set the IP addresses on the access switches connecting to each VLAN to be in the same network as the VLAN and set the default gateway to the IP address of the VLAN's interface. 
This allows all LANs to communicate with each other. The required devices for the experiment are 1. Layer 2 switch 1. Layer 3 switch 3. PCS and several straight-through cables. The network topology for the experiment is shown in the diagram below. Let's now proceed with the simulation of this experiment using packet tracer software. According to the experiment requirements, we will create a network topology with the following devices. 1 layer 3 switch 3560 1 layer 2 switch 2960 and 3 PCS we will label the PCS accordingly PC1 will be connected to port 2 of the layer 2 switch PC2 to port 3 of the layer 2 switch and the layer 2 switch port 1 will be connected to port 1 of the layer 3 switch. Additionally, port 2 of the layer 3 switch will be connected to PC3. Next, we will configure the IP addresses for the 3 PCS. After the configurations, we will test the connectivity between PC1, PC2, and PC3. Initially, we will run the ping command on PC1 to test its connectivity with PC3, and they should communicate successfully. However, when we try to ping PC2 from PC1, we will notice that they are not in the same network segment, and thus, they cannot communicate with each other. Now, let's proceed with the configuration to enable communication between PCS in different network segments. First, we will perform VLAN segmentation on the Layer 2 switch. Enter Privileged Mode and then enter Global Configuration Mode. Create VLAN2 and VLAN3. Add port F0 second, which is connected to PC1. To VLAN2, add port F0 third, which is connected to PC2. To VLAN3, set port F0 first, which is connected to the layer 3 switch as a trunk port. Next, let's configure the layer 3 switch. Enter privileged mode and then enter global configuration mode. Enable the layer 3 routing function and create VLAN2 and VLAN3. Set port F0 first as a trunk port. Before configuring the layer 3 switch interface, we need to encapsulate the trunk with 802.1 Q frames. Then, set the mode of this port to trunk and add the layer 3 switch port F0 second to both VLAN1 and VLAN2. Now, enter VLAN2's virtual interface and configure its IP address. Enable the virtual interface for VLAN2 and set the IP address for VLAN3. Run no shutdown to activate the port. 
and then display the routing table. Next, let's verify that VLAN2 and VLAN3 hosts can communicate with each other through the layer 3 switch. Run the ping command on PC1 to test communication with PC3 in the same network segment. We should observe successful communication. Now try pinging PC2 from PC1, which belongs to a different VLAN. We should see successful communication between PC1 and PC2 in VLAN3. Through this experiment, we have learned that the layer 3 switch can use the SVI switched virtual interface configuration with IP addresses to act as the default gateway for corresponding VLANs, enabling communication between different VLANs.